Are you a mom juggling a thousand different things and still trying to squeeze in some time to, you know, do your art? Here are 10 time-saving hacks tips that are just for you. I totally get it. As a busy mom, we're constantly trying to juggle like a schedule that is ridiculous. We are being pulled in 10,000 different directions and somehow we're trying to get creative and find way to do art. So let's find some ways to still create art without giving up some of that precious time that we really need, you know, to tend to our families. Now, even though this video is geared towards busy moms, if you are a very busy person being pulled into a thousand different directions and having so many different responsibilities on your plate, but you still want to create art, these hacks or tips can actually apply to you as well. So if you're not a mom, this video is still for you. Before we dive in, keep in mind that these hacks, tips, whatever you want to call them, are meant for small projects, not ginormous canvases. All of these hacks are just meant to get your creative juices flowing. This is not, you know, so you can create your next masterpiece. So with that said, let's get started. Number one, mini art sessions. You know, we are often under the impression that we need to set a whole big, you know, like hour or two time block aside for our art, but that's not necessary. We can actually do 10 to 15 minute art sessions. And in that time frame, we can get so much done. Instead of waiting for a big block of time, just take 10, 15 minutes here or there. Do it during nap time if your children are young still and they nap. Grab 10, 15 minutes and just do a little sketch or a little doodle or put on a little background on something or you have maybe 15, 20 minutes before you kind of have to start dinner, use that time and put a layer of paint or some details on whatever you're working on. Number two, set up a grab and go kit, or I, I think this sounds nicer in my opinion, a mini mobile art studio. So basically you just grab a little container that you can just put your things in like pencil, eraser, ruler if you need one, uh, little mini tubes of paints, and then put it all in a tiny little kit that you can just easily carry along with you. You can have it set up in different places. You can have multiple ones if you need to. Have a small portable kit ready. Pack it with your essentials. Don't forget a little sketchbook. Obviously, you're gonna have to paint or sketch on something and just have that ready to roll. You can put it in your purse. You can put it in your backpack. You can have it in your car console if you need to, or just have it somewhere handy around your house. Now, if you have a little studio, it shouldn't like totally replace that. Just have a very small little pack just set aside for that. Number three, take advantage of acrylics. Yes, I am a little biased here because I paint in acrylics, but you can definitely take advantage of this fast drying medium and that's just the reason it dries super fast so if you're not painting with acrylics try it if you are an oil painter try painting with acrylics for your let's say block in or for your background because it dries real quick you don't have to wait too long and therefore you save a lot of time now another tip you can use is a hair dryer if you want that paint to dry quickly and you have access obviously to electronics and your vehicle might be a little different but if you want to get that to dry fast just use a hair dryer and just like blow it and it will dry fast and by the way i just thought of a little thing in your vehicle you can just use your car vents turn on the heat in your vehicle put your little thing in front of it hey i might have just invented something new if you like painting in your car that is Number four, embrace mess-free techniques. How is that even possible if you're painting? Well, you, there are some techniques that will be less messy. It will not completely be mess-free, I'm afraid, because art tends to be a little messy. Think palette knives. You can create bold textured strokes really quick, and it's really easy to clean with just a paper towel in between. You don't have to like rinse out the brush and kind of dry, tap it dry. Just wipe it off with a paper towel and go in with the next color. You can also get them in many different sizes and shapes, so you can actually really experiment with these palette knives, and it's just very quick and relatively messy free. Another thing you can consider is finger painting, and not because we're kids, but because it's actually a really interesting technique. I've seen a couple of people create some really really beautiful, mostly nature-based paintings using just their fingers. So there's two benefits from this. No brush selection needed. I sometimes can get hung up like trying to pick the right brush. You know, they're right here. I've got a whole carousel full of them, right? And sometimes I'm just like, ah, oh, what am I gonna do? And if you have too many, it can take you a while. Well, if you use your fingers, you don't have to do that step, so you save time there. And the other time-saving thing here is obviously you'll have very little cleanup, especially if you use a glove for the painting, you pull the glove off, throw it out, and you're done. So trying to come up with some mess-free techniques, as messy free as you can get it, is just going to save you time, you're going to be quick to go into your work, and you're going to be quickly done with it. 
Number five, incorporate kids' art time. So if you sit down with your children and they are doing art, do art alongside with them. You know, that way you get them off screens. A lot of kids are into art and enjoy painting. They enjoy Play-Doh. They like drawing, right? And if you sit there with them, it could be an absolutely wonderful family bonding time. And at the same time, they also will start to appreciate your creative process. They see you working and then they can ask you questions. It's almost like a teaching moment and, you know, you kill two birds with one stone. That is if you're comfortable painting with your kids. I personally like to be by myself when I paint, but if you really like doing it together as a family, this is perfect and it's going to save you time. And you might end up painting longer than 15 minutes, like I mentioned in my first tip, right? You might have a prolonged art period. It's a win-win. Number six, prepare backgrounds in advance. Take a couple of canvases, put on like one coat of color. Often, you know, when you're looking at realistic and nature or portrait type artists, they will put down a layer of raw sienna or burnt umber you know water down as a background to start from so if you just grab a couple of canvases and do that in like one of your 15 painting sessions you've got a few paintings ready to go so the next time you're going to have like your 10 15 minute painting session you can just grab one of these canvases they're already done and you can just go ahead and start with let's say your block in and if your block in is already on that you can go in with your details it's just going to save you time in the long run Number seven, limit your palette. This has become a tip actually that I really, really love for myself. The less colors I have on my palette, the least I'm overthinking it and I'm not spending as much time trying to figure out how to mix the colors and all that stuff. Now, it's at the same time, it's a nice little challenge. You can, let's say, pick one color. It could be a primary, secondary color. Let's say you pick red and you grab a white and a black. That's your color palette. And now you're forced to work with that. And it's amazing because you're also going to learn different kinds of shades that you can create with this, just those three. And at the same time, it's just going to be less time to set up. Don't overthink this. Just grab some and that's it. You limit yourself to those colors. Now you're going to work with them. And one added bonus with that is you're going to create some really lovely color harmony in your painting. Number eight, try time challenges. Okay, yes, if 10, 15 minutes wasn't a challenge enough, set a timer for five minutes and see what you can come up with, whether that's just a little sketch, a little doodle, or whether that's just a couple of brush strokes. Limit yourself. The good thing about that is you're going to prevent overthinking because I fall into that trap myself. I start to overthink, overanalyze, and then nothing happens. Sometimes I sit there thinking for 10, 15 minutes. Well, I've wasted 10, 15 minutes. If that's all I had, now my time's gone and I have to go on to the next thing. So give yourself a timer and just go for it don't think too much just do the whole point is to get the creative juices flowing and to keep your mind sane number nine use stencils or like drawn over things let's say traceables right use those stencils or traceables to really quickly lay down a foundation that way you're not going to have to sit there and sketch for a while you just have something that's ready to roll and you can get going with that i have to just talk a little bit about potential copyright here because some stencils come without it others come with it do your research know what you're dealing with most of these painting sessions are really meant just to get your creative juices flowing to get like stay creatively engaged it's not really meant to create your next masterpiece to sell so be careful that if you do use stencils and you think you might want to sell that piece that you know that you can actually use that to sell later on okay now if you're not into traceables if you think that's cheating okay here's my take on that especially when you're doing it for your own skill development and for just your own creative process think smarter not harder you know i mean why reinvent the wheel if somebody created a lovely traceable and you want to use that go for it right and if you really really are absolutely adamantly against it then don't use this hack all right let's move on to the next one number 10 turn off perfection mode embrace imperfections because in all honesty nothing is perfect and neither should your expectations of yourself be that way either you know it is just hard if you put the bar way high it is about having fun in the process it's about learning from your mistakes embrace mistakes let them add to your artwork it might even open up a whole scala of things you didn't even consider but because you made a mistake all of a sudden your brain is like well wait a minute i can do this i can do that you see where i'm going it's not about perfection, it's about development. So just let go of that pressure and just enjoy and have fun. Remember, your art time is for you. So whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes, it all counts and it all adds up. It's like compound interest. Do a little bit every day and it will add up over time. 
So go ahead, do something for you because you matter. If you don't take care of yourself, how are you gonna take care of the little mini me's? If you don't take care of your mental health and if art is like an outlet for you to do that, you know, and if you don't get to step into that creative process, it's gonna slowly start eating away at you and then you won't be able to take care of those that need you. Art has a way of transforming our lives, even in the little things. And I have noticed that when I paint on days that I actually am creatively engaged, and sometimes it's not just painting, sometimes it's the looking up of reference photos, sometimes it's like preparing the canvas without even putting a drop of paint on it, as long as I'm creatively engaged, right? I notice on those days, I tend to be more relaxed. I tend to be able to handle situations better. I tend to be able to deal with my kids and whatever comes my way as a parent, just in a little bit of a more relaxed way. So for me, this really helps. So please don't let your busy schedule hold you back from doing what you love because you deserve to love yourself. Keep exploring your creative side because if that's how you're wired, you're gonna have to feed it a little bit. So I hope these hacks slash tips inspire you to just go ahead and create and just bring more creativity into your busy life. Now, if you want more creative inspiration, go check out some of my other videos on my channel. And as always, stay happy, keep your peace, and God bless you. Bye-bye.